fantastic day to be out in the winter woods. The fresh air, the sunshine, after being cooped up all winter, sure makes it nice. You know, the mountain men spent most of their winter in a winter camp with their fellow trappers, repairing gear, fixing traps, um, taking care of the horses, and just spending uh, good time with their friends while it was too frozen up to trap. But in the early, early spring like this, maybe late February when the water's starting to run, and the thing, the branches are starting to limber up again, and green up isn't too far off. They would start to get out and look for good spots to trap in the winter, or for the coming spring trapping. When they did that, the snow was still deep like it is now. They would need a good pair of snowshoes, like you see I have here. The pair I've got on are Ojibwe-style snowshoes. The mountain men would have learned how to make either from back east where they lived, or from some of the displaced Iroquoian or Algonquian Indians who came out from the east to trap with the Hudson's Bay Company, later with the Rocky Mountain Fur Company and the American Fur Company. If you look in the journals, you can learn about the use of snowshoes. In fact, in Ogden's 1828 journal, Peter Skeen Ogden, he records several instances about the men needing and using snowshoes. And let me quote just a few of them to you. January 1st, 1828, Ogden writes, the men paid me their respects and were politely received. The Americans followed the example and received the same treatment. The Americans leave for Salt Lake. The hunters are now making snowshoes as the depth of the snow keeps increasing. The others pass their time gambling. No cards are sold to the men at Fort Vancouver. Still, they procure them. On the 16th of January, he recorded, the Americans are anxious to procure snowshoes. And I am equally so that they should not, as I am of the opinion they are anxious to bring over a party of trappers to this quarter. I have given orders to all not to make any for the Americans. This day they offered $25 for one pair, 20 for another, but failed. Five men traded leather with the snakes. The snakes being another name for the Shoshone. On the 18th of January, Ogden writes, I proposed to one of the trappers to set off in quest of Mr. McKay, and he consented without hesitation. The Americans continue offers for snowshoes, but without success. And finally, on the 23rd of January, the American is now very low-spirited. He cannot hire a man to go to his cache, nor snowshoes, nor does he suspect that I have prevented. This day he offered eight beaver and $50 for a pair, and a prime horse to anyone who would carry a letter to the American camp. In this he also failed. I have supplied the American with meat as they cannot procure it without snowshoes. The Americans are starving on Bear River, according to report, no buffalo in that quarter. 
they are reduced to eat horses and dogs. So you can see without snowshoes in the deep winter, the American trappers are in big trouble. And had Ogden not given them some meat, they may have easily starved to death. So you can see how important it is to be able to get snowshoes, whether you had the Indians make them for you and you were able to trade, which in this case the Americans weren't, or whether you knew how to make them yourself. And nowadays, we can find snowshoes fairly easily. You can go on the, the internet and find them. Um, I found several pair on eBay of this Ojibwe style, and I've also began to fashion a pair of my own out of willow and rawhide. So I would urge you to get yourself a pair of snowshoes and get out and enjoy the winter woods. Thank you. We'll see you again soon.